Hello. Hello, good morning. It's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com. Be sure to visit the uh, website and certainly uh, apply for that uh, very generous uh, account opening offer of 25%. Alternatively, you can visit the uh, educational site, www.cfds.education, to certainly learn more. Okay, uh, this is a um, Wednesday, the uh, 23rd of March 2016. Let's uh, try and decipher exactly what's happened overnight in Asia, US and obviously the uh, European markets this morning. Okay, so US markets were down yesterday, obviously terrorism fears uh, certainly dominated um, to a large extent, although we did shake off a lot of the weakness, and as you can see this morning, the European markets certainly are quite impressively uh, strong and have certainly uh, ignored and negated the uh, terrorism concerns. Historically, terrorism doesn't actually have a large effect on equities moving lower or provided there's no subsequent uh, attacks now given yesterday's attacks were unique in the sense that uh, first of all they attacked the um, the airport and then it was continued with attacks obviously on the metro station so and still we've had uh, random uh, events uh, sporadic events uh, with regards to potential more attacks as well so pending so Again, it's, it's a cause for concern. Uh, it really is unique in the sense that, yes, there was an additional attack. And given the fact that it's Europe and Brussels and given the um, refugee situation, etc., and the borders and the uncertainty in Europe, and obviously we've got the Brexit scenario as well, this certainly complicates things, okay? Given this uh, event or this unprecedented event, which was really sad, I mean, prayers and thoughts go out to families that were affected, it certainly is. I mean, I don't think you'd want anybody, uh, imagine if you want your own close family members as well. So we could be going to the airport. It could happen to us. These in these sick, demented, uh, twisted, demented individuals. I mean, I call them mentally retarded um, because there's no religion that justifies that. Uh, and you can you can blame it on any religion. I mean, what that chap who, uh, what was his name in, uh, was it Brevik? Who just randomly uh, killed be innocent people for no reason whatsoever and inciting christianity so i don't blame christianity i blame that uh, uh twi sick twisted demented individual so it's the individuals that are, that are certainly uh needing psychological help okay and um it's, it really is sad okay and it doesn't help when we go and invade other countries for oil and resources etc and we certainly exacerbate the uh the actual uh anger and the hatred and so on and so forth so that certainly is another story. But for now, let's go back to the markets. Uh, Shanghai up 0.3%. Uh, the Chinese markets certainly are remaining stable. Uh, you have the Nikkei down and uh, the Hang Seng down and the uh, Australian markets down as well. So that in its, it should uh, exert pressure on the European indices. In terms of economic data, really, it's uh, we've had uh, Mr. Harker, certainly hawkish overnight. Uh, in terms of uh, Fed speakers... Uh, let's just have a look here. We had Mr. Bullard, obviously uh, bear, uh, hawkish as well. Um, in terms of the Fed speaker yesterday, it was Evans, and he was he was certainly uh, well. All of them have certainly been uh, tilted towards the uh, the hawkish side. So, and that's obviously helped the dollar index to a large extent, as you can see the Aussie and the Kiwi certainly under pressure, and the Euro is now sub 1.185, which in its, in and of itself is actually hel helping. And supporting European indices okay right let's get back to understanding these markets and seeing exactly where they're going to go okay so no real economic data out from Europe this morning um, although you do have the uh, Italian wage inflation really it's not a major concern although it did come on in this slightly stronger side you've had uh, economic data out in the US overnight obviously red book sales housing stats etc all more or less in line and strong so therefore supporting the dollar dollar move higher as well we had yesterday's uh, IFO, PMI, etc. all coming in more or less in line, slightly beating as well. Uh, so that certainly has helped the European indices obviously rally this morning to a large extent as markets totally ignore the terrorism uh, concerns. My bias still remains bearish because I do uh, um, expect, especially with this market at this current juncture, I do expect terrorism to certainly play a big part uh, and certainly uh, come in and actually... Uh, uh, have a negative effect on the markets. Now, my target at the moment on this euro stocks will be gap fill, which is around that 3050 level. Uh, obviously, given the fact that we failed to hold, that, that level will be quite important from my perspective. We certainly seem to have two gaps here. We've got a gap at uh, 1620 as well, so that's interesting. So, two gaps, potential pivot low at 3046 from my understanding. Okay, 
Uh, in terms of the 60 minute chart, let's just move over to 60 minutes. Okay, here we are at that Fib 75% retrace from the high to the low. So that certainly needs to be observed as well. Uh, the daily chart, we on the Euro stocks, we have actually broken out this bullish channel and therefore you are looking at weakness from my perspective. Okay. Let's cross-reference that with the German DAX. Okay, German DAX um, has hit a double top, has put in a topping tail, has left an unfilled gap behind. Given terrorism concerns still dominate, I expect that gap to close. 60-minute chart, again, you're into horizontal resistance. Uh, I do expect that resistance zone to hold. As you can see, a topping tail has certainly been created. And the daily chart, you are back into that previous support equal resistance on the German DAX. Let's go over to the French CAC now. The French CAC 10 minute chart, you are into a resistance at this 4460 zone. I expect that zone to hold. Okay. Uh, in terms of uh, the gap fill, I'm expecting that gap fill to certainly close below. And uh, it's currently at uh, 4435. And that zone will be the target zone for my shorts. Okay. So I'm certainly looking for downside. Right. FTSE 100 uh, is, has a rising contracting wedge pattern. So bear that in mind, folks. Okay. Oil prices, given the fact that you had an uh, increase in supply yesterday, uh, certainly are under pressure. Now, 60-minute chart is actually under pressure. I actually shorted the uh, the indices from the 6213 level, and I'm looking for a weakness and a potential move lower. In terms of the 10-minute chart, let's go over to the 10-minute chart. Okay, uh, you are going to potentially see support on the FTSE in this zone here. So you are looking at uh, 6190 will be my target on the FTSE 100. Uh, from my perspective, other than that, obviously you have this diagonal trend line as well. You have the 200 MA below. Uh, previous support equals resistance in this zone here. Okay, so again, that's going to be an important zone. But for now, 6190 on the FTSE, that will be the potential target on the downside. Uh, looking and expecting for a weakness. Now, copper certainly remains weak. Oil remains weak from my perspective. And therefore, you are looking at uh, exerting pressure there. Okay. The dollar index certainly seems to have rallied much higher than expected. I'm actually long the Kiwi dollar at the moment. Currently under minus 15 points on the Kiwi dollar. So quite an impressive thrust there. Uh, let's bring up the dollar uh, index. Okay. Certainly uh, moving higher quite impressively. 60 minute chart. You are into that previous support equals resistance. So watch out for that zone. Hence the reason why I'm long the Kiwi dollar at the moment. But we certainly seem to be um, holding for now. Okay. Bring up the chart of oil. Okay, oil obviously, as you can see, has made a lower high. Uh, no uh, real convincing move as of yet. Okay, and you certainly seem to be consolidating now. Daily chart certainly has held uh, on the uh, price of oil. Okay, uh, in terms of copper, bring up the chart of copper. You can see that double top certainly holding, therefore uh, indicating weakness. Okay, the Nikkei certainly tried trading sideways, but is holding that Fib 75%. So bear that in mind. Now, the S&P 500 has this rising contracting wedge pattern and is on the verge of potentially breaking it to the downside given the uh, terrorism concerns, etc. So, again, and uh, the 10-minute chart on the S&P 500 leads you to believe that you are going to see weakness in the European markets. Okay, so you do have this H&S formation looking for a potential thrust move and move lower. So, bias certainly remains weak from that perspective as well. So, looking for weakness, that's my interpretation thus far. Okay, on European indices, bring up the Euro USD as well. As always, we all know it's very important. And you can clearly see the Euro USD is held at double bottom support and looking for a potential move higher. 60 minute chart, again, double bottom support, looking for a potential move higher. Okay, four hour chart, uh, again, it's just higher highs and higher lows. Okay, so if I just take the pivot low from here, take it to the pivot high, and you are into that Fib 61% uh, potential support zone, looking for a move higher. That's my understanding. Uh, buns, let's pick up pick up the chart of buns again. As you know, it's buns is very important, especially when it comes to the European indices. And the buns certainly look like uh, they are at the moment. It looks like they are certainly into support. Uh, as you can see, uh, it certainly has diverged. The buns have diverged from the euro. Usually, the euro would certainly move higher. Uh, sorry, the buns would move higher, and then obviously that would force the uh, the yields lower. Okay, to a large extent. So this should be interesting. As you can see here, we've had weakness along with. The equity market so interesting okay interesting so ideally we need the bonds higher yields lower and euro lower and then obviously equities rally but the bond market certainly is uh, signaling uh, confusion here uh, really from my perspective certainly is very confusing either way we'll soon find out which way whether or not the market realigns with the euro or whether or not uh, the well whether the euro if if the bond market here starts to bounce 
the euro would move lower and obviously that would help European equities. So again, it's we're in a wait and see mode and we shall see how the dollar reacts, okay? Uh, in terms of economic data, like I said, no, nothing really of any, of any importance at the moment. Uh, the wage inflation data is more or less over. We've got your new home sales at 2 p.m. UK time, so all eyes will be on there. Okay, bear in mind, terrorism concerns still dominate from my perspective. It's only been less than, it's less than 24 hours and uh, anything could uh, potentially happen. So my perspective is that given the Brexit concerns, given the US market certainly topping out, I'm expecting weakness into the afternoon. Again, if US data is strong, we could potentially negate that. But given Asian markets weak, we are looking for further weakness. Be sure to visit CFDs.com for your trading needs. Goodbye.